What's up, guys? I just made the decision to officially sell all of my cryptocurrency. And I've also decided I'm done. I'm done with the space permanently. I will not be investing in cryptocurrency from here on out. Since November 2021, when Bitcoin peaked at a price of $68,000 per Bitcoin, the price has been slowly declining. As of making this video, the price of Bitcoin is currently $16,000. And of course, with the decline of Bitcoin, that comes with the decline of the entire crypto market. Now, I do know the crypto market as a whole has been through insane dips as big as 50% plus and will recover to reach new highs. But what the crypto market hasn't seen yet is a recession. And with the economic uncertainty in the world and as we head into a recession, I do not feel safe keeping my money in a speculative asset class. But still, this isn't even the entire reason I'm getting out of crypto, right? And if you're involved in cryptocurrencies, a lot of people that watch my channel are, um, you probably know where this video is going. Over the past few days, a lot of details have come to light exposing bad faith acting in the crypto space. And since a lot of people that watch my channel are involved in crypto, whether you're a software engineer in the Web3 space or you're an investor in cryptocurrencies or NFTs, I wanted to make a video about the current state of the space, about the events that just unfolded over the past few days and week, um, and educate you guys on what's going on and why I'm, I'm tapping out, I'm completely done uh, as of now permanently. So before I get into all of the recent events in the state of the space, I do wanna mention how important online security is, especially in this crypto space, which is why right now I'm gonna tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is Guardio. Guardio is a lightweight extension that allows you to browse quickly and securely. It will clean your browser, speed it up, and protect your private information. These days, there's so many data leaks, harmful sites, and malicious actors around the world trying to steal your information and compromise your operating system. But with Guardio, you can rest easy. In just seconds, you could add Guardio to your extensions from the Chrome or Edge store to improve your browsing security and scan your browser for existing threats. By using Guardio, you'll protect your online browsing and information. Guardio will help you to avoid installing malware, falling victim to scams, and they'll give you real-time alerts when your information could be at risk. By using Guardio, you could also protect up to five family members under one account. And they'll even help with other things like stopping unwanted notifications like invasive notifications or malicious notifications that could be harmful. Guardio detects threats before they reach your browser and cause harm, unlike traditional solutions which only remove them once they're already on your device. You can even sign up through mobile to enable Guardio's identity monitoring feature. This feature will alert you in real time when your data is leaked. And the coolest part is using my link, which is linked in the description, you're going to get a free email scan which will help you detect existing leaks so that you can take action right away. So go click the link in the description and sign up for Guardio now to help you protect your information and online browsing security. Okay, now we get to the madness that is going on right now. So you guys might have seen all this stuff on Twitter going crazy. If you haven't, I'm here to educate you right now, but this stuff is insane. I didn't even believe it was real at first, but yes, this stuff is real. So first of all, there's this crypto exchange called FTX, and this was the third largest crypto exchange in the world. Keyword was. If you don't know what a crypto exchange is, think about like Coinbase or Binance. It's somewhere that you can go to trade digital assets or cryptocurrencies and where you can keep your investments. So FTX was the third largest crypto exchange in the world and it was ran by this guy, Sam Bankman Freed. Now this guy, Sam Bankman Freed, is this really well-respected guy. He's considered the most generous billionaire. And at the peak of crypto, his net worth was $26 billion. The guy you see next to me is the most generous billionaire in the world. And I found him. Hi, my name is Sam, and this is my story. Apparently this guy became successful because he noticed that the price of Bitcoin on UX exchanges was trading at $10,000, whereas in Japan on their exchanges, it was trading at $11,000. So basically through arbitrage trading, he was able to make like a million dollars every single day, apparently. And just so this makes sense to you guys, like if it's trading at $10,000 in the US, I buy a Bitcoin at $10,000, I transfer it over to the Japan exchange where it's trading at 11,000, I sell it for 11,000, boom, I make a profit. So each Bitcoin, I'm gonna make $1,000 profit there, right? So I don't know if this is true or not, but in the, a Nas Daily, this YouTuber Nas Daily, his video, he says this on YouTube, he's making a million dollars every single weekday. Bitcoin is trading at $10,000 on a US exchange, 11,000 on a Japanese exchange. You take $10 million, you, you buy 10,000, you sell 11,000, you make a million dollars. And we were able to do that 
every weekday. And in the same video, he says his whole reason for wanting to become rich in the first place was so that he could give all of the money away to charity. So his goal was to basically make all this money and he wanted to choose what he thought was going to be the most impactful change in a positive way on the world. He would choose which causes were gonna make the most impact. And so he's supposedly making a million dollars every weekday and he makes, you know, the third largest crypto exchange in the world, FTX. But it was the third largest crypto exchange of the world. And we say was because as of a few days ago, they filed for bankruptcy. So now, not only is there a ton of controversy and speculation around FTX, this crypto exchange, but also around this guy, Sam Bankman Freed. So how did the third largest crypto exchange go bankrupt? Especially when we have such a saint running it, right? This guy is supposed to be like the best guy ever. His goal as a human is to make as much money as possible just to give it away, earn to give. And that's exactly what he's doing. Well, allegedly, he basically just tricked everybody. And it's insane to me that this guy was able to dupe so many powerful, successful people. You know, this isn't he tricked a few people, he tricked a ton of people. There's YouTubers you guys all probably look up to. A lot of the finance YouTubers and other YouTubers are promoting FTX, the exchange. He has pictures and videos of, with highly successful people and celebrities, you know, celebrity endorsements and celebrity investors. What's up guys? I'm here with my boy Sam from FTX. We're at Crypto Bahamas Conference. We're gonna start the day. We're gonna do some TikToks for you guys. And uh, it's gonna be an amazing day. We'll get started. We'll do a uh, get ready with me. Sam, where are you going, bro? So it's pretty scary this guy was able to trick so many people into thinking he was not only a genius, but the most generous billionaire. Now what happened is about a week ago, FTX stopped processing withdrawals. So people that had their money on FTX, they're unable to withdraw it. And this confused a lot of people because this guy in charge, Sam Bankman Freed, basically said they had the assets to process the withdrawals. It just wasn't liquid cash. So they had to pause until they had the liquid cash. But then just a little bit later, he tweeted that he didn't realize they were over leveraged. They didn't have the liquid cash and they filed for bankruptcy. And everybody that has money on FTX is out of luck. It has been exposed allegedly that another company of his, which was a quantitative trading firm, Alameda Research, which would do like high volume trading, uh, there were they were funneling money, investor money, not only just money, investor money, so FTX investor money, into this separate company, Alameda Research, and then they were potentially losing that money on trades. This is all alleged and the space is unregulated. So I don't know the legalities of all of this. Just from a morality standpoint, that's really messed up, right? I'm investing, this is the third largest crypto exchange in the world. I trust this. I invest my money in here. A lot of people held a lot of their money on this and someone on the back end is taking that money and using it for a separate company. Now, what's even crazier is the CEO of this separate company that they're funneling investor money into is this woman named Caroline Ellison. And I do wanna show you guys a clip right now of her, the CEO of Alameda Research talking about their trading. That is uh, funny, but in a sad way. Yeah, absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> Use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math. Being comfortable with risk is very important. Um, <laughs> we tend not to have things like stop losses. I think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool. I'm trying to think of a good example of a trade where I've lost a ton of money. Um, well, I don't know. I probably don't want to go into specifics too much yeah, with that. No, <laughs> Okay, so quantitative research using elementary school math, um, that is that should have been a red flag. I guess we didn't pick up on at the time. I wasn't aware of this video at the time um, and I, I didn't invest in FTX, so I'm fine, but just the general space didn't really pick up on this at the time as a red flag. Looking back, that is a crazy clip. So what basically happened is FTX doesn't have the liquid cash for investors to withdraw their money or withdraw their assets, right? Uh, the, let's say the balance is zero and I have 10 Bitcoin or thousands of dollars. I can't pull it out. Their balance is zero. They spent my money or did something with my money. And uh, a lot of investors lost a lot of money 
life save people lost their life savings you can even already look up stories right now on reddit of people talking about losing their life savings or just a bunch of money in general through ftx you can't pull the money out and this is why crypto needs regulation so badly because it's unregulated meaning that this isn't like a bank account that's fdic insured where if the bank goes out of business you're going to get your money back um, or a stock brokerage where you're able to transfer your stocks and bonds if the stock brokerage goes out of business to another stock brokerage. If you had money on FTX, you are out of luck. Now it can't possibly get any worse than this, but of course it does. Just after they stopped withdrawals, it was then reported that FTX was hacked for $600 million plus, possibly more. Another speculation, this is like allegedly not confirmed at all, that uh, potentially maybe it was the FTX team involved in this somehow. I mean, there's a lot of lying going on. We don't really know what's going on right now. So we can't be sure about this. Maybe it was hacked, but it is very suspicious to say the least. In addition to that, BlockFi has also stopped withdrawals, which has also been endorsed by so many influencers and celebrities. There's speculation that BlockFi allegedly held a lot of their assets on FTX. I mean, the space is falling apart here right before our eyes. This is all unfolding on Twitter. And a big light is now just shining on the crypto space and people are calling out things. People are calling out a transfer of hundreds of millions of dollars between crypto.com and gate.io. And then the CEO of crypto.com tweeted that there was an accidental transfer of hundreds of millions of dollars of ETH to the wrong address and it was supposed to go into cold storage, which it, once again, this is just very suspicious, especially with the timing of all of this. And I'm guessing that this is just gonna continue to go even deeper, right? So the CEO of Alameda Research, uh, Caroline and Sam Pinkman Freed are unresponsive. Nobody knows what's going on. At the time of this video, he just made these really weird, vague tweets. I don't know if his account has been hacked. It was like the word what in the letter H. People are speculating that they're allegedly fleeing the country. They have the money or something like that. I'm not going to make any of those claims, but I don't know what's going on. I think this is only going to go deeper over the next few days, and we're going to see a lot more and a lot more of this crypto space fall apart, and a lot of investors are going to be pulling out, a lot of investors are going to be selling. Luckily for me, I was able to sell all my cryptocurrency before a lot of this news came out, and I really feel bad for all the investors that had their money on FTX. I mean, this was the third largest crypto exchange in the world. That's tons of people. And I read some of these stories and it's really brutal to see how much money was lost and um, potentially stolen. So all in all, the Sam Bankman Freed guy, while he may have been clever at the beginning and had ways of making a bunch of money, I just think it's insane in the crypto space over the past two years, how many rug pulls we've seen, how many people taking advantage of other people. And a lot of people like to say that it shouldn't reflect on the space as a whole because there's some bad actors in the space that doesn't reflect on everybody. But when you have a leader and somebody that was well-respected, everybody was looking up to this guy, thought he was a genius. Uh, when he's running the third largest crypto exchange in the world and kind of tricking everybody and uh, th something like this happens, that's just terrible. It's just a terrible indication of, for the future of the space, reflection of the space. I'm done with it. I've seen much more negativity than positivity over the years in this space. As far as blockchain technology, I think there's a lot of great applications, but for digital assets, I'm done permanently until regulation comes in and a lot of these issues have been addressed. Uh, so things like this can stop happening. It just seems like so many people are acting in bad faith in this space. So I've sold out, I have zero digital assets and I don't think that's going to hurt me in the long run as of now. If you're still interested in holding on to digital assets or investing in digital assets, I highly recommend getting your getting cold storage, putting these on a wallet somewhere that is not on a centralized exchange because we're just seeing it, so many people being exposed. And like I said, so many people are acting in bad faith in this space because it's unregulated. I just want to make this video because it's absurd. I'm sitting here on a Saturday night looking at the collapse of the crypto space and everything that's going on is insanity to me. I want to educate you guys in case you're involved in the Web3 space, whether you're as an engineer or an investor, so you know what's going on. And I highly recommend looking up other people's videos on this topic to get more educated because it's pretty important if you are involved in the space, uh, specifically someone like CoffeeZilla. He's really good at reporting stuff like this. So yeah, I just want to talk about that, talk about how I'm done with this stuff for a while. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.